Okay, so we're in the chapter on diagonalization, and we're now looking at that's another diversion, I think, with inner products, norms, and orthogonality, because that's going to be used in orthogonal diagonalization, which are then used in quadratic forms and rotation reflection in, no, in quadratic forms. Uh, I can't remember using that. Anyway. Um, okay, inner products, norms, and orthogonality in page 70. Okay, so... Okay. Even fairly simple real-valued matrices may have complex eigenvalues. Consider a rotation of the plane described by a matrix R, which equals cos theta sine theta minus sine theta cos theta. Okay. So this is a representation... This is a rotation by theta degrees clockwise, anti-clockwise. Okay. Its eigenvalues are determined by solving r minus lambda I equals zero, of course, which in this case is, could be, give you cos theta minus lambda squared, okay, minus sine squared theta, okay, so then that's lambda squared minus two cos theta lambda, then the cos squared theta plus the sine squared theta gives you one, and then the roots of this equation are, let me work them out, it's lambda will equal minus b, so that's going to be 2 cos theta, plus minus the square root of b squared, so that'll be 4 cos squared theta, minus 4 times a times c, so minus 4 times 1 times 1, all over 2, okay, so that all just comes to what well, comes out to, to be cos theta, plus minus the square root of cos squared theta minus 1, okay? But cos squared plus sine squared equals 1, so cos squared minus 1 equals minus sine squared, okay? So this is cos theta plus minus the square root of negative sine squared theta, okay, which is cos theta plus minus i sine theta, okay, which is e plus minus i theta, okay. So that, that roots, those really are the roots of this equation, so these are the eigenvalues of this matrix, rotation matrix. So even though it's a real matrix, it has complex eigenvalues. In this section, we generalize the notion of a dot product to an inner product, which can be applied to complex value vectors. A first, a quick refresher on the dot product. If u and v are two vectors in Rn, then the dot product of u and v written u dot v is u1 v1 plus u2 v2 plus all, and so on and so on and so on, and u and vn. Okay, which you can write in the form if you want. You can write it as u transpose v, right? Because what does u transpose v look like? Well, u transpose, that's u, which is a vertical vector on its side. Okay, so it's like that. V then is, stays the same, not transposed. Now, if you do this matrix multiplication, you get u1, v1, plus, wait, 2, u, n, v, n. Okay. The, the dot product is useful. It allows us, or allowed us to speak about the length of vectors. So we said that the ve length of a vector was, with well, the square root of this, so the dot product of a vector with itself is the magnitude of the vector squared. Um, and of orthogonal vectors, if the dot product of two vectors is zero, then we say the vectors are orthogonal to each other, right angles to each other. Okay, so now we have, that's a dot product, now we're going to have the inner product, which is a generalization of this dot product to vectors that might be complex. So the inner product of two complex valued vectors, u and v, in, so the n vectors, but with complex numbers as entries, is written then these angle brackets, these angle, oops, angle brackets like this, u, v, and is defined as, now, it's x transpose times by v conjugate. So effectively, it's like the dot product, but you conjugate the second vector, okay? So when you do that, the entries, it's again, it's just, it becomes a number, but now a complex number, where you have, so you have x1 times the conjugate of the entry in, in y1, so this vector v, I don't know why they've changed to using x's and y's now. Oh, 
Uh, yeah, we know the X transpose. No, there's a, this is no, this is inconsistent notation. So this really should say something like U V equals U transpose times V conjugate, which is then the same as let me write it, let me write it out. Uh, so U transpose that's like just the U. Eh. U transpose, that just means put the U on its side. So you swap the rows and columns, so put the U on its side. And V conjugate, that means take every entry in V and conjugate it. Okay? Change the sign of the imaginary part. Okay? And then you get U1 times conjugate of V1 plus U2 times conjugate of V2 and so on, all the way to UN times the conjugate of VN. Okay, that's what it is. This is some typos. Okay. And now, the dot product of two real valued vectors is a special case of the sitting product. All oh, right, because if V was, if U and V were both complex, sorry, if U and V were both real, right, then you would be, that's the same, but the V conjugate, the conjugate of a real number is just the same real number, so you'd have the normal dot product. So the inner product, it just, yeah, it just generalizes the, the dot product, so that now we have something that we can use as a dot product, or we can apply it to complex vectors as well, okay? Now we're going to do an example. Uh, let A be the complex vector i0, 1 minus i, and let B be the complex vector 2 plus 3i, 1, 7 minus 2i, calculate the inner product of A and B, and then calculate the inner product of B and A. Now, the, for the dot products, if you do A, B, times A, B, and B, A, do you get the same each way? Um, I don't think so. Yes, you do. You'd get the same both ways. You know, you'd get when A, B equals... B, A. Okay. That would be the case of the dot product. But now for this inner product, it seems like this is not going to be the case. Um, unless they've made a typo and that should be a plus or something. Let's check it. Okay. So let's just check they're working then. So we have the inner product of A and B. And that's going to give us I, 0, 1 minus I. And then 2 plus 3i, 1, 7 minus 2i. Okay, so now time, oh, not, not like that, sorry, the conjugate of that. Okay, so you've got to conjugate all those vectors. So instead of 2 plus 3i, we have 2, instead of 2 plus 3i, we have 2 minus 3i. Instead of 1, which is that 1 stays the same. Instead of 7 minus 2, we have 7 plus 2i, that's conjugate. Then times those things, so you're going to have 2i and then minus 3i squared, okay, then plus 0, and then plus um, 7 minus 7i plus 2i minus 2i squared, okay? So what does this come to? This comes to, we have... We have um, 2i, so minus 3i squared. So i squared is minus 1, so that becomes plus 3, plus 7, minus 7i, plus 2i, plus 2. Okay, so we have 3 plus 7 plus 2 is 12. And then 2i plus 2i minus 7i is minus 3i. Okay. Um, so that's the same as what they get. Okay, cool. Now let's do it the other way around, and I think I'm remembering now actually that the other way around you should get the conjugate of it. You don't get, it's not uh, commutative, but it just gives you the conjugate. Okay, so we want to check what they get for inner product of B and A. So the B is, would be 2 plus 3i, 1, 7 minus 2i, or the B on its side at least, and then here we'd have minus i, 0, and then 1 plus i for the A conjugate, and then that will become what? Minus 2i, minus 3i squared, plus 0, and then plus 7, plus, sorry, plus 7, plus 7i, minus 2i, minus 2i squared, okay, so that comes to minus 2i, plus 3, plus 7, plus 7i, minus 2i, plus 2. Okay, so you get 7 plus 3 plus 2 is 12, and then minus 2i, minus 2i, plus 7i is plus 3i. Okay, yes, 
the Tod as well, and those things are conjugate to each other. Okay. I'll leave it there for now.